Vaishnavi Sundar is a feminist writer, activist and acclaimed filmmaker. Her upcoming project is a documentary called Behind the Looking Glass, which is about the lives of women whose partners have or want to transition. It's the first film ever made about this topic. Let's take a look. Get out. Get yourself out of this. Do not allow yourself to be persuaded or influenced by blandishments and manipulative arguments. Try to extricate yourself, figure out the finances. There is nothing you can be or do that will make you the object of his affection. He is the object of his affection. It's like my dad died when I was 11, but I didn't realize. And I've been mourning him for 40 years. And Vaishnavi Sundar joins me now. Thank you for joining me. A lot of people will see that and not understand the idea. Trans widows, what does that mean? Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, trans widows basically is a term that was coined after uh, a group of women decided that it was suitable to call themselves that because their husbands or their partners have decided to leave them to be become a woman. Yes, I uh, They've evidently left their family behind, their children behind. And these women feel widowed yes. by their husbands. And you've been speaking to a lot of, of these women for the, for the new documentary, um, but not in India, elsewhere. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've been speaking to women, to anybody who would speak to me, to be honest. Yes. Um, and the challenge about uh, speaking on this subject in India is the language, mm -hmm. because we speak hundreds of languages and it is very difficult to unite women together for them to understand what trans widow means in the first place. Yes. And there are so many different sociocultural communities that these women might not be coming forward to yes. speak about this and they probably don't think that they can speak about this. Um, divorces are being granted on the grounds of the husband's getting cross-sex surgeries. Yes. Um, but that's not because they care for the women but that's just because the, co the court believes that he is no longer a man therefore the marriage is not valid. So that's very interesting because I think a lot of people make the assumption that gender identity ideology has only really spread in the Anglosphere and that it's not really happening in, in many other countries but you say from India, from an Indian perspective, actually it really has taken hold there. Things have taken hold and things are moving in a very fast direction uh, for the worse because now trans identified males are directed towards female prisons, female only prison estate, men with uh, their preferred gender identity are allowed to participate in any sports of their choice. And there are puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones as part of training manuals for teachers who teach primary school children in school. And this is happening in India because all of those things you've described are happening here and we've discussed them a lot on the program. Yeah. It's a surprise to me to hear that it's so, it's so widespread in India. It is a surprise to a lot of people as well. Consider us being about five years behind you right and with more people going through this process um, maybe resisting it at some point would uh, probably create some awareness amongst people yes. but in within this uh, demographic right you can imagine that these men when they trans identify the wives and the children that these men leave behind have absolutely no voice they have no voice here they definitely don't have voice back home um, and it is difficult for people to take this into consideration because you wouldn't hear about it. Mm. You wouldn't hear about general domestic violence cases in the first place. Nobody cares about what happens to the wife, even in the generic domestic violence, not the neo-domestic violence. We have about 470,000 pending cases in the Supreme Court we heard that is uh, under Domestic Violence Act 2005. But now trans-identified males can claim recourse under this act, which is meant exclusively for females. And the ch uh, Chief Justice of India considers male and female not to be absolute concepts. Absolutely fascinating. So you've made this film or are making this film. You're in the process of raising money to, to, to complete the film. Um, but you yourself, an acclaimed filmmaker in India, uh, you've done all this work, but you yourself have sort of been cancelled, haven't you, for taking an interest in this topic? Yeah, it happened because I apparently wrote some tweets on my personal Twitter back when nobody was even, you know, aware that I exist in the internet uh, web sphere. Uh, but I basically made tweets about wanting safe, safe uh, spaces for women and how men shouldn't participate in women's sports. Mm -hmm. Absolutely basic stuff, boilerplate. Fairly standard yeah, views. Just, yeah. just, you know, standing up for women, you know, classic feminism. Um, but that 
uh, was apparently uh, absolutely horrible of me to say that. So there was a screening that was supposed to happen in New York by this organization called Polis Project. And they canceled it, I think, two or three days before it because of my transphobic views. Right. And they did not allow me an opportunity to speak about it. They did not get back to media uh, persons who asked for comments. They just shut me out completely. And that drove me to finding out about how deep it is in India, actually. Mm. And I doubled down on my activism, to be honest, since then. It was as if they shut me down and I just came out screaming out of it. You know? Well, I mean, I hear a lot of stories from, from women who've been in that position where they've been accused of transphobia or hatred or bigotry, sim or even fascism, for even expressing a view, uh, a view or an interest in this area. But their response isn't to shut up. And I suppose that's the intended outcome, that it shuts people up, intimidates yeah. them, right? Absolutely. But it's not the case in your case. Well, well, they tried, but because, um, because I am by... I don't know, by principle, I don't like bullies and misogynists. I just don't like listening to them. And if they try to shut me down, I will only scream further. Yes. And um, I used to write for a lot of Indian media uh, companies, but they've just stopped commissioning any gigs to me right now. Uh, my films used to be platformed in so many different places, but they uh, don't even respond to my emails anymore. Mm. Well, that does not hinder uh, my, uh, you know, promotion of the films and everything. What I have gained by losing these erstwhile friends is that I've gained a global sisterhood from around the world who have helped me to promote all my work. They champion all my work, and I'm truly grateful for that. It's as if this cancellation was the best thing that happened to me. Really? Yes. That's very interesting. So do you think that the, uh, the way in, through all of this, and a lot of people are in your position and are, are, but are, are worried about speaking out, is it going to be global? Is it going to be a, a sort of network of people resisting? Oh, trust me, people are afraid to speak out about this, even in India. That's why there are very few people challenging this ideology. They are against it mm. um, in principle, but they can't put their name and their face out uh, saying that they are standing against it. And these people could be, you know, working in uh, organizations that promote gender ideology in a way that insurance companies provide uh, full coverage for all sorts of uh, gender ideology surgeries like double mastectomy, hysterectomies and everything. And they provide you uh, paid holidays to recuperate from these surgeries and things like that. In uh, American and British companies who have offices back home also have this culture of having gender neutral toilets and things right. like that. So you have the foster case here. You can say uh, you are being discriminated for having GC views. We don't have that back there. No. So I can't oppose to wanting to use uh, not wanting to use a mixed sex toilet because that's because here we've got the legislation behind it but but it's not there in india not yet no so, so what next for the film you know you want you want to complete the film what else do you have to do oh i want to finish this film and i want to screen it everywhere and i want to scream at the top of my voice because they have to take into account the wives and children of these men because you hear the stunning and brave stories of these men non-stop every day all day in every channel in India as well. Uh, yes. The media has been hijacked, the academia has been hijacked, law and police have been hijacked. So if you want um, the voices of the wives and children to be taken seriously, I hope that this film would uh, come in handy and you can say that there was a film that was made on this subject. Well, if people want to donate to your film, the website is on the screen uh, right now. Uh, Vaishnavu, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you so much, Daniel.